Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Military TV. In this session, we're going to discuss the main function of an aircraft's brakes and how they work. If you are eager to learn more, stay tuned and watch this video till the end. Most commercial airplanes cruise at a speed of 500 to 600 miles per hour at cruising altitude. However, they are required to moderate their speed when landing, as normal aircrafts usually have landing speed of 160 to 170 miles per hour. The aircraft also need to quickly brake when they hit the runway until they come to a complete halt. But the question is, how exactly do an airplane's brakes work? The design of an airplane was meant to make it aerodynamically safe and able to minimize drag as much as it can in order to decrease fuel consumption and enhance performance. However, this condition produces a significant side effect where an aircraft is not able to decelerate quickly, specifically when descending. This is where aircraft's brake should come into play. On many commercial planes, wing spoilers primarily assist the landing braking. Spoilers are extendable flaps on the edges of an airplane's wings. As the plane approaches the runway, the pilots can raise the spoilers to slow it down. In this state, pilots will often leave the wing spoilers high even while on the runway. Raised wing spoilers generate drag which slows the plane down and allows it to brake more rapidly. On the other side, high-performance military aircraft utilize speed brakes, also known as air brakes or drive brakes, to regulate speed during rapid descent or to quickly lower speed during level flight. In the 1930s, air brake systems still relied on simple flaps controlled by a lever in the cockpit with mechanical mechanisms flowing through the wings. However, to make the air brakes effective at a high speed, they had to be installed on the fuselage for a better wing control, and they were essentially managed by a dampener or hydraulic system that allowed the pilot to physically pull a lever to create excessive air resistance. The notion of fuselage-mounted air brakes or speed brakes spread, eventually becoming increasingly widespread in the 1940s. For short landings in the 1930s, pilots would land with the plane's nose raised upwards at a 45-degree inclination to achieve rapid deceleration. Due to the increase in drag, the distance of landing could be reduced to one-third of the ordinary stopping distance. However, an additional method of drastically reducing landing speed that did not cause the pilot to lose sight of what was ahead of him was also urgently needed. As a result, a novel air brake system with additional flaps positioned on the wing that opened in two directions at the same time was developed. This wing-mounted design allowed for a 100% increase in the effective surface area of the flaps for landing, resulting in significantly more drag than the conceptual fuselage design and a sharper fall in airspeed. Because the nose was no longer tilted upwards at a severe angle at near to stalling speeds, the pilot was able to view the landing strip in front of the aircraft. In modern times, air brakes can be configured differently according to the function of the aircraft. For instance, the F-15 Eagle, Sukhoi Su-27, F-18 Hornet and other fighters have an air brake located on the top of the fuselage. This is how, at time of landing, a hydraulic flap would be seen tilted upward from the aircraft body. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.